Hello there. So Adobe Firefly, even it's still in beta, but now it's open beta. So it's meaning anybody can go and join and try for yourself. This is actually very powerful applications and they open new feature every time. Like now generative field is new. Before we jump to generative field, let me show you what you have here if you're not familiar. One, of course, is familiar text to the image where you can put it any text line and it will create for you image you want. It actually does a very good job, a good resolution and the image. The another ones, it was before the text effect. And this one I like a lot because you can actually go ahead, put a text, define what you want it. Space and generate. The nice things about this, you have all other options, the perfect way to create you know, all logos and add details. The one thing is interesting to me was that um, it's not just uh, cut over the shapes of the letters, it's actually will expand and create it even more integration. If we're going to lose model and generate, then you can see how it did add all this additional elements. So it's integrate them together. And this is progressing, creating better and better. Okay, next things what we have there, it is creating the uh, generative vector. So it was meaning you have it some image that is vector graphics, you can upload it and change color inside. But here's a new things was also released at the same time when it's open beta, it's called generative field. If we click on the generative field, you can go ahead and select to upload your image. After loading, you have these options that can add, subtract, all these elements you can create it. And for example, I can go erase eyes right here. And Punk LED eyes, just define what I wanted and click generate. If you're familiar with stable diffusion, you're probably familiar with this in painting effect that will create it. So we can go create all of these different type of painting. We also can let's skip this one, select in painting and let's go have it, put it red rose in a pocket. Notice what's happening. I erase element, not necessarily precise, just all this area. And it will create for me, put it red rose in my pocket. I th actually, I think this one kind of cool. Look how it's even bent the pocket a little bit nicer. So there you go here. We can create also in painting tool. Notice we also have an element that we want to remove it. Optional settings including opacity, it's transparent, how much you want to keep it background. Um, we also can work directly on the background if we need it. You notice right here, we extract our background, which is kind of nice because we can replace this with something else. Like Cyberpunk City. Okay, let's click generate. And here we have a replacement for our background. So what does this make different from in painting and other ones? It is how Sleek can optimize this. The one thing you don't need to worry too much about settings. You just open, process what you needed, and your work is done. Of course, that now become part where you need to come and create the string. But here's a more interesting thing. Beside this um, creating online, Adobe also released Photoshop beta version where this one integrated directly in Photoshop. So you don't need to take your images and going from in and out to install Photoshop. What do we need to do? Going to your creative desktop. We'll install from here. Or if you don't want to do this, you can just when you go to the beta, you notice right here, it says Firefly coming to app in Photoshop. So you can just click online and download it Photoshop from this link. But also you can go inside your um, Creative Cloud, click on refresh, go down to beta applications. And from here we can install it. By the way, the Premiere Pro also have some surprises, but we won't cover in this video. When we go in Photoshop, we'll go ahead and click install application. Okay, so after installation completed, you're going home and you'll find shortcuts for Photoshop beta. By the way, to access the beta, you actually need to have an active subscription to Adobe photographer plan or um, 
everything kind of plan. Okay, let's go ahead, open our Photoshop. And we'll notice right here we have it, our Adobe Photoshop beta with kind of new splash screen. Okay, so right here we're inside the new Adobe Photoshop beta version. Please keep in mind it is beta version and it's prompt to crashing. It's already crashed twice on me during the recording. And also one time it's actually hard to crush my all OS. So it's computer need be rebooted. Just let you know, beware that is beta version that is prompt to crushing. Okay, right here we have it one image. And if we click on this, you'll notice we have it option select subject, remove background. We did have it select a subject before, but this is work a little bit different. Are you utilizing Firefly AI? So let's go ahead and try it. We'll go click on this select subject. And you notice right here we should have it. Yep, marching ends. This is where we select it. Let's deselect and let's click on remove background. Should be work similar to what was before. Now we only have it right here. The mask is created. And it seems like very easy to do when you have this a subject on the um, background, on the gray background. So right here we have a different image with a little bit more um, different colors. So let's go ahead and see how this one again, click on select subject. We'll see how well this and it seems actually work very well, except right here. You can see with a lag and floor did not select very well. Overall, this is one of the hardest select because we do have some problem with the contrast rate and it's how we selection you usually select by the contrast and so on. Okay, let's go ahead and deselect this and same if we select remove background should be do exactly the same. Now instead select background what I want to do, it's try to work maybe on the separate items. Um, we can done kind of before but now with Firefly we can actually paint in and replace and change settings. So let's go start with one right here I'm click. And for example, let's go to zoom in. And with the brush, I want this brush a little bit more visible. Notice when I select, it is creating and says generate field and other ones. So I'm going to click on generate field. And of course, I need to agree with this. Now I have the prompt to put it in. And for this one, let's go just put it maybe um, golden Rococo brush. Okay, so after render, you can see right here we created and we have it several permutations so we can look through different styles, see which one will work better in this case. Um, if we look on our right side, you'll notice we also have it access to our variations, our prompt that we can generate and as well additional mask if we needed to select it. Overall, I think this one will work very well. And I think I think yes, let's go keep it that one on. I'm zooming out. Notice we have a new layer create with new icon that it says it is AI or Firefly generated. In this case, we can reopen and create new. Okay, so let's go back to our first image. And right here we have a nice uh, portrait already isolated. And this is easy to replace background for us this way. We have it few ways we can replace we can replace directly on this image or we can create another image to replace both ways it will require selection so if we want to replace on this image we want just go ahead and click on the our portrait right there so it's you notice it select our from the mask already selection is as we're doing we already have it pop up and says generator fill so this is one way um, if we're creating, it will fill up a little bit with the edges. So we'll look on both of those options. And second options, we just can create a new layer, select it. And as we're selecting, we have the same generative field. So let's go ahead, try this. And, and we'll just go cyberpunk, street, night, rain, photorealistic. Okay, let's go ahead, click generate. And here we have it, our image that we can take and put it be under. So this is one way to generate. Let's go just generate inside the, our mask. 
For this, I'm saying I'm going to click and select our subject. We'll have it fill and same things. Cyberpunk Street Night Rain. So we'll just put this one. Let's go ahead and click generate. And I think because I generated it, it will overlay with uh, my person. So I actually should uh, inverse. And that's what we're going to do. Let's check one thing this way. Notice it's created additional layer below. And yes, it did create mask like this. OK, let's click again one more time. And this one will go select inverse because we want to select around all this our subject. And we'll do same things. Punk street, Lambridge well, city, street, night, rain. Okay, let's go ahead and click generate. Okay, and now we have it created. Notice it is creating all these new layers. So if we go disable, let's turn off those layers. This is our first layer. Notice right there how is the mask going. So it's actually nice for the blending. And I'll show reason why this is nicer. So this is another one. But this one was in mask. And of course, we have a background. Background is kind of look nice. However, if we take our mask and we'll put it up front of our person, these edges right here, this is what blending with other color will make it more natural. And then many times when you do compositing, it's where you're going, you're going over kind of side and you try to blend colors. So I think general to select with mask and blending like right there sides. I think this is actually very well going with the edge much better. If instead we're doing this way. Well, still not bad, but right here you can see the discoloring happening, the lighting, I mean, and here we have it a little bit better going in this way. OK. Let's see what else we can do right here. And for example, we'll take our subject. Let's go click again on the mask. So we'll select and instead the short. Let's go have it blue metallic shirt. So let's go ahead and see if it will recognize overall image with a portrait what I have here, there and just specifically replace it like short, whatever I was specifying. And it's what I expected. It just replaced all image. So it's not as the intuitive, the using image of the portrait of the person and kind of apply to this. It is just utilized by using mask and working with a mask. Well, hopefully in the future, they will kind of a little bit more smarter. For example, if you work with stable diffusion and you work with control net where you can specify, it can work a little bit better this way. So they're not up to there. Again, it's still be beta, but it's very nice how it does its job. OK, so let's go ahead and put more to the test. Another one, we'll go back to another image. And here what I want to do it is see how well it will work with the extending background. Um, some other applications can perform much better on this. So we'll see. This is general generic. The canvas extended and we'll use the enable content aware. Should be actually have a little bit older algorithm, but it's OK. We'll play with this around. I'm extending content aware. Let's go press enter. It does process quite a bit fast, but you can see it just extended. So it does not do any magical things, any render. I think in this case, what we can do, just go select up to this area. And we'll have it feel and let's go set the um, Rococo background. Flowers. Happy colors. There you go. How about this one? And let's go ahead and click generate. OK, and here's completed. Actually did surprising not bad job it did extend it does not add details like analyzing all images but it did add um, if we go inside and let's look analyze a little bit closer you'll notice it did not 
keep it very well um, patterned. So we have it right here with the lines. And this is just a copying. Not actually too accurate. So it's still a bit low resolution. I think that is a problem is we'll see on resolution. But for the background, extend is not bad job done in this case. And I see very easy use for me when I do compositing or photography extension. So it, it does work very well. In some cases, it's remind me that plugin um, I used for stable diffusion inside the Photoshop. So it's kind of work like this only except it's utilize the um, Adobe Firefly engine. Well, thank you for watching this video. This is short introductions to the Adobe. We'll see how it will progress, how say they have it plus and minuses. It's nice to see they're actually integrating inside the AI render inside the Photoshop. Um, remove some fear of those designers who have, does not understand sometimes technology and uh, fear of the what this can do. And then um, we'll see what's going on with this. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great day.